Hello, this is your Seen Dream textbook lecture series by Dreaming Fifi. I am Dreaming Fifi. And I am Adam. And he will be rolling ours for us again. This is chapter one, pronunciation, lesson two, the rhythm of words. We will be studying the differing consonants in multisyllable words, clitics, and how they interact with the consonants of the beginnings of words, biting of syllables, and the placing of stress. So, consonants inside multisyllable words versus at the beginning or at the end, they behave a little bit differently. You'll notice that sometimes, by coincidence, you'll end up with RH, LH, or HW next to each other inside a word, but these sounds cannot occur inside words, so they must be an R and an H, an L and an H, and an H and a W. Like in... Gaurhof. And Gladwen. I, before vowels inside of words, does not become a y sound. It's just a regular vowel. For example, in words like Yerfonier and Fia. The letter L. You should remember from last time that an L after an E or I is palatalized. Inside words, the L will be palatalized only if it is at the end of a syllable after an E or an I, not if it's at the beginning of the next syllable. You'll see this in words like terlen and girdin versus words like bella and gilia. The letters PH. As I mentioned before, the PH marks keys that have become Fs. You'll see this happening around Ls and Rs often, but when it is at the beginning of a word after a clitic or if it's intervocalic, I mean between two vowels, it came from the consonant cluster PP. -P. Tolkien sometimes wrote it F F. So it will end one syllable and start the next. Some examples would be FL and Afar. Letters N G. You pronounce them both the ang and the G, like in the word finger, when it's in between syllables. You see examples of this in words like bongo, dangen, and ingem. A clitic is a word like the or an. In Sindarin, prepositions are often treated like clitics too, unless they have more than one syllable or have a diphthong in them. Clitics rarely ever get stressed, and often it's written with a dash between it and the word it's attached to. The sounds between the clitic and the start of the next word behave like they are inside the word. Some examples would be you notice that the ang and the m and the n are all longer, and they should be noticeably longer than they are in the other words. Dividing the syllables. Syllables are determined by vowels or diphthongs. One vowel or diphthong per a syllable. The so syllable boundaries are always shown by periods. Some examples are Lorien. You notice that the I and the E are in separate syllables. Periain. And the E and the Ein are also separate syllables, but it's not three different syllables, E, A, uh, and in. It's just V and Ein. And the last one is Pui Oel. Two diphthongs can be sitting next to each other in Sindarin. This is two syllables, not four. Pui and oil. Dividing the syllables, consonants. Syllables normally end with a vowel or diphthong, as you may have noticed, unless there are two consonants between the vowels or diphthongs. You put one at the end of a syllable and the other at the beginning of the next. Some examples would be Pedir, Achfadon, Ennora, and Espent. Compound words can be a little bit tricky because they often end up with three consonants together in between the vowels. That can be a little bit difficult to figure out where to put each consonant. And where they go depends on which word they belong to. In the homework, I will mark the morpheme boundaries for you so you won't have to figure this out. Unfortunately, there's no way to really know this until you have learnt the, what the words mean. Some examples are angband. Ningor, land here, and angued. The placing of stress. Barring one syllable words, stress will always follow on the second to last and third from last syllables in a word. So in the word kan, that one syllable gets the stress. In the word 
balan, the first syllable gets the stress. And in three syllable words, like guanunig, the first syllable gets the stress. But if there was a four syllable long word, then the syllable that is third from the end would get the stress. Like in the word heniacal. In a three or more syllable long word, if the second to last syllable is heavy, it will get the stress instead of the third from last syllable. A heavy syllable has at least one of the following traits. Long vowels, that is a vowel written with an accent, diphthongs, or if the syllable ends in a consonant because there are two or more consonants side by side. Some examples would be and Ivan. And that's all. See you at chapter two, lesson one. No buyer. No buyer.